Opera legend Renee Fleming in The Hours, which opens May 5th at the Metropolitan Opera. Fleming, of course, is a Kennedy Center honoree and a longtime advocate for the healing power of the arts. For her new book, it's called Music in Mind. Fleming collected essays that look at the powerful impact that music and the arts can have on our health. Renee Fleming is here. Good morning. Good morning. So I There's really- There's a diva and a legend in the house. That's right, <laughs> and it's not Vlad. Uh, <laughs> and it's not Vlad. <laughs> um, awesome. No, first of all, I was telling you backstage that uh, I've loved you and I've seen you perform Rota Linda in, at the Met, um, but I love that you are focusing on the power of music in the mind, and specifically as a, a young, as a father, I, there's this picture of the brain in the book where you describe the different areas of the brain that are affected by music, especially music that's introduced early to children. Tell me about that. Well, first of all, there's a whole section on education for ch you know, music education in particular for children, which is really important. Uh, but the neuroanatomy anatomy piece from Dan Levitin, that chapter in the beginning, helps really explain to us what the circuitry is in the brain. That's the reason why scientists are studying music because it's it grabs the entire brain more than any other activity because engaging with music is incredibly complex. Mm. You have to hear, you have, you have, this, uh, you have all this processing, language processing, um, it's, it, time, space, mm -hmm. it's really complicated. Uh, and then, you know, the other arts are in the book as well, but evolution and brain anatomy are the two things that help me understand it. Yeah, so people are yeah. just starting to get... That's literally where I was going, to un yeah. To understand it. That's right. People are starting to understand that for the first time. We've always known, and we were talking earlier, we know that music yes. is healing. We know that music is good for us, but there is a science behind it. And is that why you wanted to write this book or edit this book? So I became fascinated by this um, when I had access to the NIH and was able to hear all these presentations by the scientists and the therapists and researchers and after about five years, I said, I want to share this with the public. So mm. this is kind of my gift to the field. A gift to us, yeah. There are 41 chapters, and you can just pick and choose what subjects you like. It is a very big book, Renee Fleming, but it covers a whole lot of information. I love how the book starts with Francis Collins, who wrote the uh, foreword, where there's a dinner party with three support, not one, but three Supreme Court justices, very, uh, very lovely group of people. And someone suggests an impromptu sing-along, and that someone was you. <laughs> is that, do you often do that at dinner parties? What is your thinking with that? Because I love the idea of this. Well, you know, first of all, this was such an important dinner party. And I, what I said was, was Francis had his guitar. And now I know he brings his guitar to everything. <laughs> and so I, yeah, Sounds I like said, Vlad. let me but sing with you. You know, because uh -huh. it was a little tense. It was the week of the marriage equality decision. So mm. the justices weren't particularly engaging with each other that night. Uh -huh. But then they did after we all sang together. But what was your thinking when you did that? Just what I said to him was, uh, I, I really wanted to meet him and talk to him about why scientists were studying the music. Uh huh. You know, because I, I thought, I don't, I don't get it. Why are they interested in, in music? They, you know, they're busy people yeah. like solving cancer, et cetera. So he said, it's, we have a new brain initiative yeah. and uh, it's, it's more, it, it's more um, I would say, interesting for us to look at than other activities. What's the state of music therapy in terms of funding from insurers, support from insurance companies? Uh, do they back it? Do they see it as the future? So there are there is some of that. It's all state by state. Mm. We need to have complete licensure for our creative arts therapists in the country. And so that is kind of coming along. This is a relatively new field in terms of having the rigor and efficacy that science needs to be able to Ensure it. Hmm. So it's a lot of it's a lot of research. And you personally help contribute to this this legacy and that that efficacy research by having your own brain scanned. What what did, what was discovered when? What, what's in there? Yeah. Well, yeah. where are your keys? Yeah, I I don't think I got the. I'm signing up for two hours in an fMRI machine, and yeah. so what they discovered was that hearing and imagining singing in my in my head, actually, we call it aud audiation, was more powerful than speaking or singing. Wow. Like, way more wow. activated. It That's activated surprising. far more of my brain. Wow. I mean, you that look at, remarkable. in this book, you look at childhood development, mental health, and aging. What's the biggest takeaway for you? What do you want readers to get out of this? I know we can pick and choose, but what do you want to Yeah, I mean, there are so many surprises. Like, I didn't know that, that 
this would be singing is great for cardiovascular health. Mm -hmm. That you know uh, that postpartum depression is treated remarkably by singing in a choir. Mm. So you know it's kind of the elephant in the room. It's all around us. These aesthetic experiences. Renee, uh, this is this is such a remarkable book. Thank you for being here very much. Music in Mind is on sale right now. Thank you.